So Doe and London, many of you probably know, but we, we effectively are an office regenerator in, in London, in central London. We hold 6.2 million square foot of, of real estate, of property in, in London, across 17 villages. We like to call them villages. The old street, sort of Shoreditch Village, and the kind of hub of the, what we call the tech belt, which runs from King's Cross all the way down to Whitechapel. This very much is the kind of the, the node, the hub, the, the sort of the buckle of that belt. In that portfolio, we actually have very much long-term relationships with our clients, the occupiers of the buildings, our tenants. And we're very much customer focused on them in terms of our thinking and what we're trying to do next. Some of our key long-term relationships, you know, some of them have been going for like 20 odd years. We meet with them, we talk with them, we actually, we listen a lot to their needs and their desires and their, their futures, what they want out of their buildings. We actually learn a lot along the way. So that does help to kind of uh, direct some of our thinking. But there's also a lot, a lot more to it than that. What is it that drives us to kind of produce the next Derwent building? Having worked with a lot of industrial type buildings, converting them, using, using uh, that thinking of the past, but also listening to our occupiers, our, our clients, um, leads us to a, what I believe to be a, a kind of a new, a new sort of paradigm in, in, in thinking, in, in office development, um, where you've got these three drivers, sociological, technological and environmental, uh, changes in the world of workplace um, and design and offices that really make traditional approaches not redundant. It's about people, it's about design and it's about a low carbon environment. Breaking that down a little bit further, it's trying to attract the very best people into organisations, offering creative spaces where actually it engenders much more collaborative thinking, so actually companies can produce uh, the very best thinking and, and then compete in their own markets. But actually to give them that kind of space is, is all about design. That's about actually giving people volume, giving them light and actually inspiring spaces. On the technical side of it, actually, we're able to do that by using materials with what we feel is more, more integrity. We actually using them to do many more uh, jobs than they originally had intended for. So the structure, for example, the concrete, is doing three things at White Collar Factory. It is the structure, but it's also providing the cooling. We've got uh, embedded cooling in that structure, but it's also an architectural finish. So in doing that, we're creating these spaces with fewer materials doing more job, doing more work, less covering up, less finishes. Doing so, we are trying to create a more cost-effective, more efficient building. In parallel and behind all of that, we have been inspired over the years by a whole series of 20th century masters, and they have done in, in, their, in their own ways. They, you know, they have used materials really intelligently and well and turned concrete into a beautiful, beautiful architectural ingredient that has always kind of driven us in, in our thinking and also our, the architects that we work with. A quick, very quick journey, and I know, I think Steve's gonna pick up on this again, but actually the T building in itself is now a destination in its own right. This is probably, you know, one of the beginnings of the journeys where we worked with an old industrial building and realized that actually uh, people loved this very kind of raw industrial type space. And um, this was a tea factory from the 1930s, but actually now has become a very sought after place to work. And so it was from that we th actually thought, you know, these, these older industrial type buildings have real integrity that, you know, and the qualities, the attributes of robust materials, volume and light. How can we take that and actually apply it to a new build? One of them along the way, the Johnson building. Again, here we're talking, you know, one of the first times that we actually thought, OK, let's expose that concrete, make it really a beautiful finish. And then that led on to the Angel building, 2010 completion where actually you know the whole feature of the atrium we went to town on making the concrete a beautiful finish in, in itself we sort of took all this thinking and brought it to current day and really white collar factory is a whole culmination of all those strands of thoughts from having you know the history of, of working with older industrial buildings of, of talking and listening to our tenants and trying to create something new something relevant for the 21st century a new a new workspace um, right on Old Street Roundabout. Um, it's due for completion at the end of the year. This is actually a view from pretty much the, uh, this, this building across the road from Oliver's Yard looking out. And it's really, it is an urban campus. It's not just one building, it's actually six. 
and you've got the low-rise buildings around a courtyard to the south and it, we're trying to create a kind of mixed community of, of different sizes of office, office floor plate for all sorts of different different stages of, of, of companies. So organisations will work together, effectively kind of develop their own kind of ecosystem on, on the site. The space itself, well, we're, used, we're bringing all that thinking, create that special space that we think is sought after, and that is about clear heights. We've got three and a half metres floor to the soffit and the volume, bringing the light in, opening the windows. We've got the concrete core cooling, which we're going to touch on later. And that gives people a very kind of robust uh, backdrop, a, a canvas to, to, play, to play with effectively, to do all sorts of things with. The volume gives, gives people the opportunity to put all sorts of different kind of fit outs in it and to actually ch you know, change that fit out quite uh, frequently and quite easily. Everything's exposed, the ducts, sprinklers, lighting, everything underneath the concrete soffit. So, the other aspect of it is the thermal mass. You know, we're building a heavy concrete building, concrete core, concrete floor slabs at 15, 16 storeys. Um, and with that, it retains the cool, so it retains the heat. So we're actually keeping the place cool and keeping it warm. One of the uh, typical floor, the entrance hall, anything could happen. It could be an entrance during the day, but a sort of bar, cafe, an event in, in the evening. And again, you've got the double height exposed concrete wall. Everyone coming into the building will see the board marked timber concrete wall. And on the roof, we have our roof terrace and also a running track around the roof. So people will be able to go up. This is all common space, common for all the, all the occupiers. 150 metres around the, uh, the running track on the roof with views through those porthole windows through London, across London. So we've got some special spaces at the top of the building, but also down below, underneath the courtyard, we've created a very large 10,000 square foot space, six metres clear, where we can have a huge sort of cafe canteen or an auditorium, courtyard above with daylight coming through. All in all, it's trying to create this campus, this new campus, and very much a, a new type of space, and one we feel that really resonates with how people want to work today and the kind of office environment that people want to create. We have let up to the 12th floor with people like AKT and the Office Group and Adobe and others, and, and there's, there's more interest um, along the way. So that really brings my section to a close. I'm going to hand over, so thank you.